Hey, you guys, guys, and bums, and welcome back to a few bad men. So today I got another one of these Murder Incorporated follow-up videos. Okay, so this is the story of John Spider Murtha. I talked about him in the Murder Incorporated series, but today I got a whole episode on just John. All right, but before we get into that, if you're new here, you want to join the gang with 21,000 strong. All right, you gotta bump off that subscribe button. That's your first thing. Second thing you got to do is you got to break that thumb and then you got to ring that bell so you don't miss nothing. All right. You don't want to miss nothing. Trust me. I got some good stuff coming down the line. All right. I got some good stuff coming in. All right. Trust me. <laughs> all right. So John Murtha was born 1898 in Brooklyn to John Murtha and Sarah Hawken. The Brooklyn spider was raised in was similar to the old West. In Bedford Stuyvesant, where he came from, the streets were not paved. In fact, large parts of Brooklyn were still farmland. As a teen, he became a flyweight and used the name Spider in the ring. He got his first pinch July 1915 when he was arrested for second degree assault. It was dismissed. Less than two weeks later, he was arrested in a raid performed by the cops. The cops busted into a bungalow at 3.30 a.m. Several neighbors complained that 11 men were loud and rowdy and kept them up all night. All but two of the men received five days in jail. John was held on another charge of petty larceny that he received a suspended sentence for. On August 4th, 1916, Spider was arrested for participating in a craps game. He was arrested along with seven other men as a part of a borough-wide cleanup of crap games. They were fined one dollar each. On January 23rd, 1917, he was arrested with a man named John Kessler for trying to steal a purse of a 28-year-old woman named Lyona Val near Lexington and Reed Avenues. They were held on $1,500 bond. Lyona claimed that the two drug that would knock out drugs. She spent the next few days in the hospital recovering. I don't know what came of that case, but I do know that Spider was arrested on March 17, 1917 for getting into a fight at a dance contest. He was forced to stay over the weekend in the city prison. He was arrested a few days later with Robert Demange. Spider and Robert used false keys to get into a store and stole a phonograph. They were held on $1,000 bail. He was caught in another gambling raid on March 16th. He was one of three men taken in. 50 others escaped down a fire escape. Should have ran faster, Spider. On June 6, 1919, Spider caught his first murder charge. A black man named Hiawatha Jefferson was in the restaurant when Spider, Nicholas Riley, and George Etang tried to rob Hiawatha in the bathroom. He fought back, and the fight made its way out to the street, and Hiawatha was hit over the head with a bottle. He died in the restaurant's bathroom. Spider and his co-defendants admitted to having a fight with the victim, but they denied they killed him. They were discharged. It was found that they could not be connected in any way to the assault. Now, this is just another example of the Brooklyn justice system at its finest. They admitted to fighting him, but they could not connect him to the assault. <laughs> oh, well. On June 24th, 1921, Lillian Rosenbaum and Mae Sterno walked into the Glendale precinct and told detectives that they were on Corny Island alone after midnight and were offered a ride by four men in a car. The women said the men took them from Corny Island to Highland Park and assaulted them. Spider and William Burke were arrested in a restaurant at Broadway and Gates. They were held on $1,500 bail. Uh, John Murtha was arrested in Stanford, Connecticut. After he was caught trying to sell jewelry, he had stolen from a house of a jeweler. He was found with two diamond rings, a diamond locket, a chain watch, and a chain, and $4.50. Now, I'm sorry, guys, I don't have the, all the results on all of these charges. If they didn't print in the papers what happened, I can only tell you what I find. It's, fu it's funny, there are four or five John Murthas in the news during the same time. One was an official who died around 1912, and his son was John J. Murtha who was an official who was arrested for corruption, and another John Murtha who was a cop who was also arrested for trying to help a witness in a police trial leave town. So, got a lot of John Murthas going on in the 20s in Brooklyn. All right, so now, in 1922, prohibition is underway. And while John was not a bootlegger, he was arrested for being a bartender at a speakeasy after a raid. He was held on $500 bail and arraigned on charge of violating the state liquor law. February 6, 1925, Murtha and Six Pals walked into a restaurant at 1022 Broadway and got into a fight that left William Sowinger dead from stab wounds to the neck and abdomen, and his friend Rudolph Beck sent to Kings County Hospital with deep stab wounds to the scalp. 
Mirtha and his pals came into the restaurant where the two were eating. He was heard saying, you two are a couple of rats. We're going to bump you off. They told the patrons to leave and you won't get hurt. A huge melee took place. Chairs and other objects were thrown. The fight made its way outside. The police arrived and found Soinger in the gutter dead. Beck writhing on the ground in pain, a pocket knife on the ground, and Mirtha along with Nicholas Riley and John Savage in the crowd. Mirtha and his friends told a story that it all started with an argument over a boxing match that had taken place recently. But more likely, the stabbing happened because Songer and Beck tipped off the cops the spider packing a ride in their cabaret on New Year's Eve after him and Beck got into a fight. For this, they would stand trial. Mirtha's pal Nicholas Plug Riley was charged with third-degree manslaughter. John Savage was indicted for assault and Spider was arrested for having a pistol on him when the cops arrested him. Again, there's no news on this outcome, but if it's like most of the cases that happened in Brooklyn in the 20s, he was probably acquitted or suspended sentence. He definitely didn't do too much time or learn his lesson because on March 8, 1926, Spider was arrested and held without bail for the stabbing of Michael Farnham during a fight outside of a cabaret. During the ruckus, Spider gouged Farnham's eye out with a carving knife. To Spider's surprise, he was found guilty and sentenced to two to five years in Sing Sing. Back on the streets, Spider got back to business. But things had changed. Spider found out when he was walking down Wilson and Jefferson Avenue with Michael Sassano, when a man appeared and shots rang out. Spider was dropped with two bullets in the gut. He was taken to King County Hospital. Sassano was stabbed and beaten, but not seriously injured. On May 3rd, 1932, Spider and Patrick McVeigh went to the speakeasy of Joe Glickman. They pulled guns and demanded money from the register. Glickman refused, and Spider shot and killed him. Then, Spider and McVeigh, drunk and high off adrenaline, made their way to another speakeasy on Gates Avenue. After more drinks, they noticed a group of pretty young women. Spider and his pal made advances to the ladies, but they rebuked them. The angry drunks pulled guns and shot 29-year-old Catherine Pinther in the chest. She died two days later. They were arrested and were released on $5,000 bail. On May 23rd, McVeigh was in a gunfight that left his arm so riddled with bullets it had to be amputated. The pair would eventually be acquitted of the two murders. On October 17th, 1932, a pedestrian reported to police that a drunk man was rolling around in a gutter. When the cops showed up, they found Spider with five holes in him. He was taken to the hospital and he told the cops he went for a taxi ride, had some beers, and then took another taxi ride. Next thing you know, he woke up in the hospital. The cabbie who drove him that night had a different story. He said that he picked Mirtha up at Fulton, Alabama at 1.20 a.m. after Spider got out of another cab. During the ride, the cabbie said they were being trailed by a big sedan. The sedan rolled them off the road. The man in the sedan got out and ordered Spider out. But before he could, shots rang out. Spider was hit with five shots. The shooter got back in his car and ordered the cabbie to follow him. A few blocks later, the shooter stopped and got into the cab with the driver and the bleeding Spider. He then ordered them to drive to Cypress where he pushed Spider out. The cabbie went home without reporting the shooting, but a mechanic at the cab shop noticed bullet holes in the rear seat of the cab and called police. Now, if you watch the Murder Incorporated video, you'll remember that Rocco Morganti was shot by Abe and Pep at a card game. This was the same day. Okay, it happened on the same day. A speakeasy owner named Peter Savio was arrested for the shooting, but Spider refused to identify him. Spider took a while to recover from the last shooting. But the next year, April of 1933, Spider was driving when he smacked into the back of a car being parked. Spider, reeking of alcohol, jumped out of the car and charged at Thomas Condon. Condon didn't know that Spider was the toughest man in Brooklyn, and he dropped Spider with one punch, causing the bad man to hit his head on the concrete with a dull thud. Spider shuddered for a moment, but was back on his feet, coming at Condon. But a cop was on the scene, and he separated Spider from Condon. When the cop told the man he, who he knocked out, when the cop told him that the man he had knocked out had been arrested for everything up to murder, he gasped, but it didn't faze him. He still went to the station where Spider was arrested for drunk driving. Spider kept up his criminal ways, but in February 1935, he found out who was running Brooklyn now. Spider and his pal, Michael Sassano, the man who was stabbed with him when Spider was shot, began to steal pinball machines owned by Happy Mayon's brother Duke and place them in other stores and collect the proceeds. Duke and Mirtha had words at a speakeasy that resulted in Spider clocking Duke right in the jaw. This would not be forgotten. A few weeks later, Spider's pal Sassano was killed in a barroom fight not related to the rackets. On March 4th, 1935, Spider was walking out of a hotel with a young lady named Florence Nesfield. 
when Frank the Dasher, Abandondo, and Max the Jerk Gollum approached Spider. They pushed Nestville aside, and the Dasher said, We got you now, Spider, and shots rang out. Spider was hit with five shots in the chest, neck, and head. He died next to an elevated pillar. Duke Mayon was brought in, but was released due to lack of evidence. In 1940, when the Murder Incorporated case broke, Max Gollum was arrested for the murder. The Dasher was already in custody, and they were both charged for the killing. Florence Nesville came forward, despite death threats, and named them as the killers. Since they had the Dasher on the Whitey Rudnick case, they decided that they didn't have enough evidence against Max, so he was allowed to plead to a lesser case. The toughest man in Brooklyn was laid to rest in Holy Cross Cemetery after a Requiem Mass on March 7, 1935. And that is the story of John Spider Murtha. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this story as much as I enjoyed telling it. Make sure that you bump off that subscribe button. Break that thumb. Bring the bell. All the YouTube stuff you got to do to keep the channel rolling. If you want to slide a little envelope upstairs to the boss to help to keep the channel running smooth, the link is down below. All right. This has been a few bad men. Keep your nose clean and don't take any wooden nickels. I see you in the funnies.